Hello everyone, I'm Advocate Dinky Aghi, working as Legal Associate at NRI Legal Services. Today, I will be sharing information regarding family settlement for property disputes in India. Conflicts over properties have been prevalent in India forever, whether it is in low-income households or ultra-rich families. The property becomes a bone of contention amongst family members irrespective of their financial status. When such disputes arise, the most common solution preferred in India is to drag such matters to courts. However, people rarely realize that court procedures are quite expensive, lengthy and tedious. Also, there is no guarantee for a satisfactory resolution. Globally, alternative dispute resolution is being considered as a more preferred mode of resolving disputes over litigation. The merits of conciliatory and mediation procedures are being given more emphasis over lengthy and expensive litigation. Similarly, the Indian legislature is also attempting to promote alternative dispute resolution and therefore, nowadays, family settlement is being considered as a far more amicable and pocket-friendly method for resolving disputes amongst family members. So now let us first understand what family settlement actually is. Family settlement is an agreement through which family members mutually work out how a property will be distributed amongst themselves. Now for example, Mr. A died interstate leaving behind two sons and one daughter. He had three residential properties and one agricultural land. Now as there is no will, the independent share of each of his legal heirs is not allotted. As the entire property will be considered as one pool, each of these legal heirs will have an equal share in the entire estate. Now, as it is practically not convenient to use each of these properties jointly, a family settlement can be arrived at between these legal heirs to decide their independent shares. So the method of family settlement is mostly preferred in case of joint properties or common property disputes rather than settling disputes relating to individual properties or self-acquired properties. Such arrangements are not only limited to the title of the property but can also be used for its use and possession. Indian courts have often regarded these settlements as transaction between the family members in order to preserve their property, peace and reputation. Now such arrangements are based upon an assumption that if a dispute is settled with amicable family settlement, the parties will not have a right to reopen the case at a later date. Now since we have understood the meaning of family settlement, now let us understand how and when does a property dispute in a family arise. In India, there is a strong culture of holding the property jointly within a family. But when the senior most member of the family dies or there are other differences amongst the family members, the need for distribution of the joint property arises. Nowadays, the relationship status and family businesses are getting more and more complicated. This is mainly because of the fact that each individual family member is seeking for separate ownership and greater independence. This leads to disputes amongst families. Now the dispute is mainly related to the share each owner will get in the property because at the time of distribution, each of the members want to get maximum share. So the property disputes generally arise because of three main reasons. First, when a person dies interstate and the property is to be divided amongst his or her legal heirs. Now, when a person dies without a will, the inheritance of the property is done on the basis of inheritance laws. Lack of knowledge and clarity of proper inheritance laws can lead to disputes. The second reason is when the will is challenged. So, when the desire of the testator of the will is challenged, dispute regarding the distribution of the testator's properties arise. Now, since greed is a great leveller, even an iron-clad will can be challenged by dissatisfied beneficiaries on the ground of undue influence, misrepresentation, mistake or even improper execution. The third reason is when the joint owners want to have their separate shares in the property. 
lack of mutual understanding and consent can lead to disputes as it becomes very difficult to decide about the independent shares in the joint property merely reaching out a consensus is not enough there are a few legal requirements that are required to be complied with in order to ensure that the family settlement agreement is valid now as it is a conciliation process a third person usually a lawyer or a senior member of the family helps the parties in reaching out an amicable settlement once the terms of these settlements are arrived at a family settlement agreement is drafted in the same format as that of a partition deed now to ensure that such an agreement is maintainable and valid it is very important that it is signed by all the concerned family members voluntarily because a missing signature can easily become a ground to challenge such a family settlement agreement in the court at a later stage now the question as to whether family settlement arrangements or agreements are legally binding or not has been answered by the honorable supreme court in various judgments in the landmark judgment of kale versus deputy director of consolidation it was held by the honorable supreme court that when bona fide disputes whether present or future are settled by bona fide arrangements that are fair and equitable then such arrangements should be considered legally binding upon the parties the court further stated that such arrangements will act as an estoppel and will prevent the parties to such settlement from revoking or challenging it at a later date now it was also held that the maintainability or evidentiary value of such settlements cannot be challenged merely because they are not registered now let us talk about the principles that govern family settlements the principles that govern the family settlements are very different from the principles that generally govern the settlements between strangers as such cases are very sensitive the courts consider taking the broadest view in order to ensure that the interest of all the family members is protected the court also give regard to consideration as there might be instances when the case might involve the members who are not a part of the same family between members of the same family it is often realized that claims and counter claims are made against each other and claims with regard to the ownership of the property or its maintenance are canvassed now in order to prevent protracted litigation or exposure of private disputes to public gaze family members often resort to resolving their disputes amicably with the influence of a well wisher of the family now such family settlements may result in either transfer of the property or recognition of certain rights with respect to the family members in such properties or even creation of limited rights of certain family members in the property now the basis on which such family settlements are considered to be valid and binding are the mutual considerations that flow between the parties and put an end to the claims and counter claims filed by them if a family settlement is voluntary bona fide and without any coercion or undue influence then the courts tend to uphold such family settlements even if it involves the release relinquishment or surrender of a share by a particular party in order to widen the scope of family settlements the indian judiciary has held in numerous cases that the term family should not be interpreted in a narrower sense as it also includes a wide range of members who are a part of the family in its comprehensive sense so now the question arises is family settlement the end of the road now although a family settlement agreement cannot be revoked except for a court decree it can be challenged in the court of law the grounds on which it can be challenged are undue influence coercion fraud forgery misrepresentation of facts and also improper execution paying heed to these trip wires while drawing out an agreement can serve the purpose and provide a full proof amicable and binding family settlement now although it is not a very complicated process but certain loopholes can ruin the entire purpose for which family agreements are formed therefore it becomes very very important to take these points into consideration 
in order to reach out a mutually acceptable family settlement agreement. If you found this video informative and productive, please like and share. In case you have any doubts, you can drop a comment or write us at query at the rate nrilegalservices.com. Thank you.